out. So everybody probably heard that. Okay. Um, this is Mark Regal with John Lavinia Success Mastermind. Today is June 10th, 10 days away from the summer solstice, longest day of the year for us in the Northern Hemisphere. And by the way, if you took a look at the calendar, you'll see that actually the next day is about the same length. And I think after that, the mornings start uh, shying away a little bit first, but um, it happens pretty quickly, but you get a couple days, a nice long days. And it's um, at least where I'm at, I think sunsets in and around 8.50 uh, or 8.53 or something like that. So it's pretty late, um, but it's nice. Uh, it's nice to have that and that kind of the late afternoon or evening warm weather. So what we consider warm here comparatively. Anyway, um, let's see here. Who do we have? Sharon and I were just uh, talking away about band and, uh, you know, an orchestra and all those things. And and what's, uh, you know, what, what, um, what kind of pushes people in their youth and kind of gives them some direction. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about that today, so that's a little teaser. I see Suzanne, uh, Evelyn's here, Gail, Ego, welcome. Like the picture, Ego, that's pretty cool. Uh, Daisy and Edward. We'll see if some stragglers end up coming. It looks like, yeah, Carl's just coming in here, so let um, me make mention as I go through. I'm going to do what I usually do. Um, I have a PowerPoint presentation that I'd like to provide. And it's going to follow along some things that were said and sort of, I don't know if you'd call it the theme necessarily the, this week that that uh, we've heard Glenn and Ivier and John uh, all talk about and, and, then, and then our participation. But um, also where are we sitting? Cause this was mentioned a couple of times too uh, and that being with um, us coming up on the, the halfway mark to the year. So, uh, and us being maybe a little sensitized to, uh, to, to that, that fact and maybe re-engaging or reestablishing um, ourselves to some degree and where we wanna go for the second half of the year. So with that, let me see if I can do my share screen and uh, kind of get things started here. I uh, see, uh, it looks like Edward showed up and I saw Carl, I think I mentioned Carl, hey guys. Um, and now when I'm going to this, by the way, everybody just, uh, I don't have as many people that I can see uh, on this, but um, let's kind of get things going. Hang on a second here, I wanna back up. Where do I wanna go here? Boy, I'm messing myself up. That's, I wanted that slide to start with. Okay, so we're gonna talk about resetting. And, why did I use these pictures? Well, because I'm gonna tell a story. It's a true story. It's, an, it's a series of events that happened to me 30 years ago. So it's a ways and there might be a few clouds here and there that, but um, there, there's also some things that are pretty vivid about what I remember. Why did I use these pictures? Because the one on the left, although that is the 235 uh, Death Angels. Uh, see, we had all the crazy names, as you can probably imagine. That shows uh, a, a couple Mark 82s, um, and Mark 82s are 500 pound bombs, and you see these little devices on the front of them, and you see this rack that's called a multiple ejector rack, an MER, M-E-R. And I was, involved in a lot of that in those days. And as you can probably imagine, a plane goes out, it drops a few of those, comes back and we do a reset. We have to go through the entire process again. The aircraft on the right was my last fleet squadron um, in 1991. Um, I was in VMFA 323. I still maintain to this day, a uh, number of relationships with people that I know from, from those days. We've all moved on in life. So, uh, they've been around since about 1942 or 1943 or thereabouts. So squadron has been around a long time. And actually in the Marine Corps, they are going to be the last Marine Corps fighter squadron to transition to the F-35. Found that out at a uh, air show a few years back. And by the way, anybody's on the West Coast, if you're interested, I'm considering doing the Miramar air show in late September, last weekend of September. So if anybody has some interest, get a hold of me and maybe we can get together and go down there and um, have a little fun and watch some really cool things. So if you're into that kind of stuff, I am, I have been my whole life pretty much. So let's talk about um, 
Let's talk about the definition of reset, or of, of reset, moving something back to an original place or position. And it says original place. Well, that original place might be the beginning, but maybe it's something along your route of travel um, or participation. So it doesn't necessarily mean we're resetting to the exact moment of the beginning of your business, of your action, of your activity, whatever it was. You may only have to reset back to something that's abbreviated that, you know, and you, you maybe it's like the TV, you, you have to set all the defaults back to the normal uh, setting, you know, at some point along the way. You said, well, all this stuff before here was working great. And then I got to this point and uh, things kind of went awry or something changed. We're going to talk about that a little bit, some things that cause those kind of things. And just so that, the, you know, the antenna are up and we're, we're feeling that kind of stuff so we can make the adaptations as we need. But just, uh, just kind of keep that in mind. So resetting does not necessarily mean that you're going all the way back to the beginning, like as, as we all kind of met initially with Blue Sky and JLSM back in the, uh, the early and mid months of uh, last year. It might mean something that you only have to really reset maybe a month or two ago, or maybe just in the last six months. Maybe it was this year. Maybe you do have to look a little bit further back. Uh, resetting uh, and resetting just uh, can be something that takes literally seconds, minutes, or it might take months uh, to kind of get through the process. What are some of the synonyms, some of the things that you, some other words that you may have heard uh, that sort of mean the same? Uh, in and around aspects of resetting. So I just, what I'm attempting to do is kind of reset your mind uh, and your attitude uh, for, this, for this discussion today. So the story I wanna talk about is in and around 1990, 91, when I was a, oh, I'd say I was sort of an early to mid-level uh, captain um, and I was at El Toro. And why I say there, there are 13 listings here. And when the quote balloon kind of went up and we knew things were gonna happen, um, I was, uh, and believe me, I was not the only person that was affected by this. There were hundreds, there were thousands, probably even tens of thousands of military and other personnel families, associated families who have to deal with much of this. We always talk about that in the military too, is just what they have to deal with, especially when we are actively engaged in something and we're forward deployed and they're in the rear going like, well, what the heck is going on? Think about the level of stress that is. I suppose Sharon can have some appreciation of that. I mean, her son's going through Apache school right now, the Apache, the age 64. And uh, yes, every time he goes up, uh, that's, you know, aviation is a great, uh, Wayne will tell you this too. And so will Adrian, uh, aviation is a blast. I love aviation, I love flying, but uh, it can be an unforgiving sort of science and activity as well. So those kind of things. And when you escalate that into something more tactical where you're doing things that other people don't like, uh, that can make things a little more interesting as well. And that's kind of where I was at with all of this. So uh, I won't get into all the specifics in this, uh, but just understand that in the course of all the things that were happening then, um, there are a lot of moving parts and priority, priorities change and people are attempting to get things taken care of. And you've heard me say this comment uh, a number of times, shooting the alligator closest to the boat. Um, you know, we get a chuckle out of that a little bit, but that literally at times, that's what it becomes is we get into this sort of survival mode and all we're attempting to do is I'm just trying to get taken care of this activity that's coming down here and this is in my face and I need to get this one done first. Selective disobedience. There's another term for you or another phrase. So you're just kind of picking and choosing what do I need to accomplish just to kind of get some breathing room to move forward. And that's, uh, that's kind of what was going on during that eight month period when I was uh, forward deployed. And it started at El Toro. And while I was uh, working in logistics and doing, um, working with uh, the Maritime Preposition Force, what, that's what we called it, there were 13 ships where we take these, uh, these huge thousand foot long ships and we fill them chock-a-block full of supplies to forward deploy. Those supplies include 
um, ordnance, they ammunition, um, medical supplies, um, logistical lines, vehicles, you name it. Every walk of life, every principal end item that you can imagine, every part, every every item, tanks, all sorts of stuff go onto these ships. And the reason we do, and there are people on these ships that have to take care of all this equipment. And it needs to be preserved because it may sit out on these ships for years and years. And just to give you an idea, there were three squadrons and these ships, uh, one, of the, one of the squadrons was in Diego Garcia. And if anybody knows where Diego Garcia is, that is in the Indian Ocean in the middle of nowhere. And Diego Garcia is so remote that it's even, um, it's even mandated, it's not even recommended, it is mandated by the command that's on that small atoll that you cannot go out in the water on the outside of the atoll because there are too many predators. You can figure out what that means. But there is an inlet and when you land on this runway, this runway complex that can take B-52s. And how do I know that? It's because I saw a bunch of them there back in 1990 and 91 uh, in, in the lead up to, uh, to the Gulf War. So I know they exist. Uh, it's, a, it's a very long runway. And all these MP, there was a squadron of five of these ships inside the atoll, just sitting out there and it's highly humid and corrosive environment. So it takes a lot for people to keep track of all this stuff and take care of it. In any case, um, we deployed and we we landed in a place called Sheikh Isa. It was a um, it was an unknown uh, classified run, uh, airport complex at the south end of Bahrain, now known as Isa uh, Runway or uh, Airport or Air Force Base uh, in Bahrain. And we landed there in the first aircraft uh, C five that was the first airplane ever to land there. We were in the back of that. We got off that plane, and I'll just never forget. The 73 passengers that can sit in the top back of a C-5, if anybody knows what a C-5 kind of look like and where people sit in that, we got off that thing and we're all looking at each other like, oh my gosh, this is, um, that's not the heat of the engines. No, uh, we, were, uh, we were right on the coast, uh, literally several hundred yards from the coastline. So the humidity gradient and any of those of you who live in the Southeast uh, can appreciate that. I'm sharing you guys and anybody's living in Florida and those things where you deal with a lot of heat and humidity, you're probably laughing about this, but um, that's not what I really grew up in at the time. So th that was really my first big experience with that kind of heat and humidity. And just fast forward to another event uh, many, many years later when I was forward deployed to Iraq and you know Fallujah and those places, I did spend a little bit of time down in the Horn of Africa at the at Camp Djibouti, um, down in Djibouti at uh, Camp Lemonade. And uh, I saw a day there at 151 degrees. So there are places in the world that do get plenty, plenty hot. Uh, and it was humid and it was uh, pretty nasty. So we think, well, wow, you know, combat and all this other stuff. But heck, man, most of the time you're just dealing with the elements and and I bring that up because in this environment, in our environment as entrepreneurs, we deal much the same way with the stresses, with the mundane, with the things that we have to do every single day that, uh, you know, all day long. And we do this week after week after week. And then we get these little intermittent spikes where fantastic things happen for us. And, and it's like the golf shot, you know, you, excuse me, you do all these golf shots and, 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 they're average or you get a few maybe here or there that are nice and then you get that one pristine shot and you go like this this is why i'm out here so you get those little wins and that's why we kind of stick with this and we hope for the big win but that's that's kind of the entrepreneurial environment so moving forward uh, as you look through this list and you see 10k forklift opera yeah 10k forklift you know a 10,000 pound forklift we get to the point where we were so short on people as we were bringing people into um, in, into Saudi Arabia and into Bahrain that um, we actually had to uh, solicit um, the staff NCOs and officers and anybody who was willing to get on some of the uh, the equipment moving equipment, to take out of containers to, dis, to, to to deploy to forward forces. So I was actually up, literally, I was up for four days straight without sleep. Um, not even a nap, nothing. We were just, and as long as you, know, you didn't even stop for 10 minutes, because you knew if you tried to put your feet up, it was over. 
So you just stayed engaged and you stay full. And again, I wasn't the only one in the group. There was just a lot of that. Um, a lot of people working very hard. We had about, uh, we got to the point where we had about 8,000 Marines and I could, you know, if we want to get into this deeper, I could show you some pictures of the port and that kind of stuff at, you know, some other time way down the road. But this was a really a very interesting time in, in my life. And, and every single time that, hey, Captain Regal, we need to have this done or Captain Regal, hey, I need to have you come over here. Uh, one of the other things that I had to do very quickly in the second bullet down there was I, I just showed up, up at the wing because I was passing some word about something that we were doing over at the logistics department at, uh, at the group level, which is one level down from the wing. And next thing I know, I'm getting hauled into this intel room because there is so much message traffic coming in that all the senior officers, like the, you know, the colonels and lieutenant colonels and, and, and all the field grade, they couldn't keep up with all of it. And they were really concerned that they might miss something because that's really important to us. And all the intel people were engaged. So I had a clearance. So what did they do? They sat me down in a chair I may interview this guy, uh, C Colonel Zimmerman. We called him Z-Man. He was a F-4 and an F-18 driver. Uh, he's down, he lives down in Southern California. I thought maybe, and I've talked to him a couple of times. He's interested. He might be interested in doing an interview. That would be a great interview because he remembers that. He's the guy who pulled me in there and sat me down and says, you know, Cat Regal, this is what you're going to, this, this is what you're, <laughs> we need you to do right now. So I was reading through message traffic and it was, is it a reset? Yes. What are we resetting? I'm resetting my mind from doing logistics stuff and moving equipment to all of a sudden reading all this paperwork and all this stuff that's coming in and trying to decipher and interpret what it uh, means and what, what actions we might have to take as a result. Do you feel like that in your entrepreneurial business? that the stuff that's coming in, maybe PPC changes are, occur, maybe demands by, uh, by the consumers change. You have this ebb and flow of things. Um, the cost of goods and services comes up and down. I mean, if we look at what's going on in the world, anybody seen what the cost of lumber is these days, just as a kind of an offshoot. So uh, there's constant change that's going on. And we are in, these are literally seconds that we are making resets as, and looking at longer term resets that may have a much more involved part of, uh, of our business reset. So, okay, fast forward down here, I, 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 I emboldened uh, FARP OIC, not the other word, FARP, Forward Arming and Refueling Point. That's what it stands for. So in any case, you could see that uh, through that eight months, I was moving around a lot and we could talk more about this stuff, but in each of those cases, there were different things that were going on. Um, and there are different, uh, there are different commands when I say, somebody says, you need to do this or do this, or somebody hands you something and you've got a business, for example, look at your own business. Did John tell you how to do this? Did, um, you know, did Ego tell you how to do this? Did Glenn? No, this is your own business. We are all entrepreneurs. You're having to tell, you know, you're having to kind of decipher for yourself. Well, that does occur occasionally uh, for us uh, in other, in, in the military too. And that happened to me in the case of becoming uh, the security development officer for the entire base. That lasted, oh, um, so I spent about two or three days really prepping myself and reading everything I could on this to kind of figure out what I was going to do, only to find out that they were going to ship me back to, uh, to the rear to do some more preparation because of my, list, my logistics and maintenance background to piece together other items that we felt that we were needing, packages that we needed as we move towards uh, a, a, an impending uh, combat, you know, combat environment. So here you are, you're focused, you're doing all these things. We've all lived this experience too. We've all had all this and we are focused and we are laser focused on what we are doing. And all of a sudden something changes and we just, and I just spent like, two, you know, 15 hours or two weeks or a couple months and something changes and you have to make a 90 degree turn and you have to, and you drop all that and you have to start with something else. That's a reset. That's a big reset. And that does things up here too. So just uh, kind of food for thought. These are the kind of things we need to keep in mind. Why do entrepreneurs need something like JLSM? 
Why do we need something where we are dealing with one another and we're interacting with one another and, and we come to these meetings? It's because we need to reduce the wave height. We need to get more stable. We need to be able to take some of the emotion out of what we deal with because these are highly emotional and fiery kinds of things that can happen to us and make these, and we've all lived them every day for our entire lives. So we all get this. I'm not, I'm preaching to the choir basically. So um, let's talk about the fart for just a minute. Uh, when I did that, and, and the reason I bring that up is because this was a relatively very short amount of time. It was about six days long. And what we did uh, was we literally uh, ended up um, being a forward deployed uh, airport, uh, airport and fueling station. And we forward deployed lots of ordnance and you can see the different squadrons that we supported, all these. And we even had A6s start coming in. We even had some F-16s come in from the Air Force. And we'd fuel them up and we put bombs on them too. So we, we if, you know, in, in about two or three days time, the word started to kind of get on the street that, uh, hey, these guys are up at Jabal and they have, a, they have a real gig going on. We weren't sure when we first started this, we knew conceptually and by using this in Vietnam and in, in other places, what these things do, but we weren't sure that we really needed it because the, the, uh, the planning that went in and the execution that was occurring, anybody who's watched Killbox on YouTube or in a documentary know how the allied forces used the air campaign to limit us to about a hundred hour war, ground war. We basically did a, a mop up when we went in, you know, to, to kind of take over the ground, but it was the air campaign that really um, made this all happen. And this was just one aspect of it, just a one small aspect, but I participated in this and this is the guys I had and just to watch these airplanes come in and fuel them up. With a, uh, with a tactical fueling system, a big bladder on the ground that was like 30 yards across, you know, four or five feet high, full of all this JP fuel, and you're fueling these planes, and then they taxi over, and they, they get out, and we're putting them, we're throwing all these bombs on those, what you saw, the MERS, or the TERS, and, and uh, which is a triple ejector, and we're just filling all these, and I don't have the pictures here to show you, uh, but you know, we had, we had a, a tarmac, you know, an apron where, where planes would park and a hundred yards of nothing but it Mark 82s, 83s, 84s, Mark 20s. These are all different kinds of munitions. And then you can look behind where, it's, where I've listed that. And no, these are cluster munitions or these are 500, 1,000 or 2,000 pound bombs and they make big holes and they carry a lot of concussive effect. Uh, over great distances, and I'm talking like four to 800 meters. Um, if you're within that distance from the concussion, uh, it's, it's likely that you're probably going to get hurt. So this is this is not a joke. You know, mankind does a lot of great things for ourselves, and we have great creativity. Yeah, we have great creativity for doing some other pretty nasty things too. And I just I won't get into it, but we can just imagine what that is. So let's talk about what a farb does, um, just just briefly. So I was down at Bahrain. And the one, two, three, four, you know, people would fly up into to, to the zone, they would drop their ordnance and they would fly back to where we were at. You can see that it's about half the distance or so. So you're not using as much fuel. You're, uh, you're, you're, it doesn't take as much time. Uh, it's the same pilots just in the same airplane. The airplane is already configured. All the software has been punched in, all the codes, all, you know, identify friend or foe, anybody who deals in aviation, those are all the stuff I'm talking about. And then they fly back up there in a short hop and they do their thing. And then they take the long route back. Uh, and, and another reason they did this is because we had so many airplanes up there that uh, the tankers that were flying overhead that were stacked you know, stacked, you know, at tens of thousands of feet. And, and these guys would just come down levels. They're burning off fuel as they're waiting their turn to come into the area of operation to release their ordinance, you know, based on whatever target acquisition comes up for that particular time. So this is a very orchestrated, very choreographed, very specific kind of event, although it is also very adaptable because as certain targets begin to uh, be alleviated, um, then a shift might occur even at the, in the last minute or two, hey, we need you to go over here or to go to this. And that's why we did these things called kill boxes is because you could literally say, well, if anything was moving in this, we knew it wasn't us. So it was free game. 
uh, and it may sound kind of, you know, obnoxious, but that's, that's, that's how we made that kind of progress. So uh, that, that's, uh, anybody wants to talk more about this stuff, uh, be more than happy to talk offline or another session, you know, not a session, but, you know, offline. But uh, in, in all that time, those are resets that are going on too, it, you know, with the aviation, you're flying around doing three or 400 knots and you go, oh, now I need to go over here, you know, 30 miles away as opposed to here. We're all dealing with that all the time. Oh, we had Scud missile launches that came in and we had to run to, uh, you know, run to our bunkers to hide. So, you know, just in case we weren't sure if, you know, if that stuff's going to hit you or not. And, and they're burning all these oil wells. And, and now we have to put on our gas mask because we kind of find out that a number of these oil wells are actually poison oil wells. Uh, if you ever watch the movie Hellfighters, you know, with John Wayne, you know, it's those kind of, some of those wells had that kind of stuff. And then the prevailing winds for that time of year actually brought all that stuff back over all the troop movement. And I won't get into that, but that's a whole nother uh, aspect. So here we are donning gas masks and still trying to do some of this stuff. And, and then we have all these oil droplets and you've probably seen the pictures where the guys, nice tanned kind of multicolor uniforms are starting to turn charcoal gray and black. And that's just, that's oil. That's, and that's not even water, just being wet with water where it dries out. That stuff seeps, seeps into that material. It's, it, it then creates this uh, kind of, um, you know, this insulation effect. And now you start heating up. So we start having heat casualties because of the temperatures that we're working in uh, with some of this. Even though we were talking about February and it's a cooler temperatures for that part of the world, still, when you're when you're running around and you're loading bombs and you're fueling aircraft and things get, uh, and you're trying to do it very quickly and turn things, these things around, move people back out, uh, or you're up on the front lines, you can just imagine that um, those are the other kind of things to deal with. So uh, reasons for, and I'll move forward here, reasons for a reset. Um, the, I just, I was just kind of thinking to myself, okay, so in my, you know, in, in the activities that I participate in and the different channels of income that I participate in the e-commerce world, what are some of the things that might have an effect on me? Either something that could have a much more immediate effect or something that is much more long-term. And this kind of co covers a, a number of those timelines. But I'd say that one, uh, one item here that I believe has the greatest effect on what we do is the personal attitude in setting our goals and our, our milestones and where our head is at. Why do we do JLSM? Why do we read the books that we read? Why do we follow um, the, the, the word and advice and consent uh, of others that have uh, you know professed these things many decades, even centuries before us? Why do we do this? Because we live in an environment where the, the, the ebb and flow of the tide and the waves in the ocean can, can reach massive heights. And we need to somehow find ways to minimize that. And it is our mind and it is our attitude about these things that create those environments that um, in some cases are, are perceived and not real. Uh, and our mind has an ability, and it's great that our mind has that ability to do that. We, we can, when we do something like uh, Elrod's savers and we're looking at the affirmations or we're visualizing the things in the future that we are attempting to do and we, we can literally begin to taste and feel those kind of things. Um, that's what drives us. Somebody is, you know, is at a store or they see something in a picture and, and being visual creatures, we just say, wow, why do we build uh, battle boards? Why do we, you know, build, uh, you know, why do we put pictures and, and, and sayings from people on our walls like I have around mine? Why do we do so many things? Well, it's because we want that in, in you know, we want that ingesting into our, our, in our brains and into our attitude every single day. It's the whole James Allen uh, as a man thinketh uh, aspect of things. So, and I, I still I still refer back to that book uh, on many occasions because I just of all the things I've read, I just I see, I keep going back to that one piece that, and it was said this week, whether whether you believe something, uh, you know, you do something, or you uh, whether you think it's right or wrong, um, you're you're right about it. You're correct about it. It's just. Uh, whether you believe you can accomplish this or you think you're going to fail at it, 
it's in your head. And I'm not saying you're going to go in space and, and breathe oxygen, but you know, a little bit of um, common sense here, but we could be our own worst uh, enemies. And I am a violator of that. I dealt with that uh, almost every day. There are things that get in my way. This is not new. And it's, uh, as Glenn says, just because we fail doesn't mean we're failures. We just got to keep kind of moving through those things. Oops, hang on a second. Let me, uh, I missed a slide. So what does this kind of look like uh, when we're, there's sort of a transition period that can happen literally in minutes or months. And initially, again, we're shooting that alligator kind of close to the boat. That's that sort of the survival aspect. This is the timeline. I don't put a specific time in here for a reason because this, it can, it can vary quite a bit. Um, stability. And that's not sustainment. Stability is just trying to create an environment where it's a little more manageable. The, the, the sustainment piece is over a period of time, being able to not just create a more stable environment where it's much more manageable and, and you can handle it better, but being able to do it over a longer period of time, that's the gradual aspect of this thing. And then assessing, really, I'd say assessing is something we do, even though I've listed it kind of forth in the play here, assessing is something what we're doing consistently through the entire effort. Because as you move through this, aren't you assessing even in a survival mode? No, no, I can, the, I, these things have been taken care of and now it's the, I've been able to do this. So I, I'm assessing and I'm now being able to manage things a little more easily. And, and these 38 items that I was working on, now they're down to maybe 22. And now I've been able to take these goal, or these milestones or these action items down to 12. And, and it's just uh, life is becoming a little bit easier. But as you can see, and I imagine everybody is starting to feel that as well or understand that or perceive that, we get to that point where we say freedom. And the only caution I would say with the aspect of, uh, of freedom is we also, as in aviation, as a, we drive our cars and anything, we get um, we start to get a, a, a little uh, easy at what we think that we're doing. We get complacent. We, we think that everything is working great and all of a sudden something comes in and takes the rug right out from underneath our feet and we're back into it again. So... I say sort of cautious optimism, we stay focused, we keep moving, but th this is sort of a, this is the continuing all encompassing process that we're doing with all the things that we do throughout the day. Doesn't mean it has to be overbearing um, all day long. And we, I know I feel this sometimes and I feel like, oh my gosh, but sitting down, I think Shannon puts this together, John puts this together, Emma has put this together for me. I've got this kind of stuff. Uh, from Therese, the people that I'm working with on certain issues and, and trying to categorize or, or differentiate or prioritize and just so that it, you're, you're biting the elephant one bite at a time. You're just taking one piece at a time and moving forward and you're prioritizing and, and handling those things that maybe are more manageable or maybe working like uh, Dr. Deming, uh, Edward Deming, say you, you you want to create a list of action items that you do. And there are some things that might take a very long time to do. And if you attempt to do those first and you, and you're not attaining those goals, you're going to, you, you're going to maybe get a little frustrated. How about having some shorter term goals that are a little bit easier to attain to kind of keep the motivational level up, those kind of things that kind of keep you moving along and, and then look at the larger uh, items and, and the longer term items and then you start to see that those things, oh, now I just had this, uh, this, this better goal that's coming to buy, you know, that, uh, that now I'm going to celebrate on this one. I, I I've been working on this one for a long time. It might actually be a relatively short-term goal, but it's a very hard, very challenging goal. But you know you need to get it done to get to that next level because it has an effect on other goals or milestones that you're working on. So you got to kind of play with those to see where those go. I pulled a slide from my very first uh, session and, you know, the, with all the traits and I just, uh, the reason I'm putting this up here is just in the course of your everyday doings, look at uh, where you're doing and what you're doing in this reset. We're at the half year mark, basically, uh, like I say, 10 days out from the summer solstice. Um, and I'm not saying that we're looking at the downhill slope necessarily, you know, we, we keep moving up, we keep moving forward. 
but and I'm not saying that in all 14 of these that that all of them necessarily apply uh, with the same weight. There may be certain things here that have greater relevance to you as you reassess and reset what you want to accomplish. If you're looking at new goals or milestones, or you're making some adjustments, maybe maybe you've passed some of those uh, some of those goals, and you need to kind of rethink about how much effort and time you're putting into something, and what other distractions, other issues I'm dealing with. That we can we you can look to a number of these and the other management uh, principles that I approached over three sessions, um, you know, weeks ago. Look at some of that information, reflect on that, and figure out which ones kind of make more sense to you. And I'm, and I'm not telling you how to approach this. I'm just just trying to put some, you know, put some, you know, tidbits into the brain, and maybe something will take hold and go, yeah, I should be doing this, or yeah, I just need to take action on this thing or do this. You know, this wasn't such a great idea, and I worked very hard. Feed your stallions. It, Get rid of get rid of this and maybe move over here. Not saying dump it off completely, or maybe you need to, but uh, but maybe reassess and figure out and reprioritize. And in closing, I just want to say, stay the course. We we say this almost every session. John says this ad nauseum. We in our discussions, in our open forums with one another after these sessions, we we've commented on these kind of things uh, all the time. Main thing is in, in my book, don't quit. Just just keep at it. Whether it's slow or fast, keep at it. Stay consistent. One foot in front of the other. Eat the elephant one bite at a time. Stay focused. Stay positive. Have some humility. Work with others. You know, put the ego in the back pocket. Um, see what others are doing. Maybe they have some influence and they have we're all in the same family. We all are definitely very open and can talk to one another. And we all have things to share. You know, in my personal experience, where I was at last March and where I am now is night and day. Uh, and the one thing that this environment has opened up for me are other e-commerce channels of income that I had really no understanding of or, or, um, or knowledge of. And as these little things, because different people are doing different things as they open up, they say, hey, have you heard about this? Or do you want to take a look at this? It may or may not be for you. It may or may not work. Um, that's for us as entrepreneurs to determine whether or not this is something that can fit in what it is we do. And I want to say that we actually, I think it was Ivia that had this discussion at the beginning of the week when she was talking about the Amazon thing. So um, these are the... Just understand that uh, not everything for everybody is going to work in the same way. And don't feel um, slighted because maybe somebody's doing something that you're doing, uh, they're doing something that you don't really want to do. Um, I say acknowledge it. Uh, I say high five it. Um, you know, give them kudos and, and, and support each other through this whole process. And be accepting and be willing to adapt and move through the issues that you have to move through um, and, and, and don't, don't let it beat you up. Don't let it uh, take you down and, and change that positivity, you know, and, and keep, that, keep that information flowing and in a positive way. And if you kind of get to that point, reach out to people and talk with them and come back to getting in that good mind state and looking forward. Do the reset, whether it's the reset up here, whether it's the reset with this, whether it's the reset with other resources, whether it's the resort with your entire uh, the reset with your entire business, whatever it is, it, it's a reset, and and it can be very small or it may be very lengthy and very long, but whatever it is, that's what we need to look at, and that's that's why I thought this actually might be just a decent subject matter, to kind of have us open up again and kind of rethink about where we're going, and with that, I'm going to stop my share. I'm going to open up the, uh, you know, I'm going to open up discussion and I uh, see them, you know, 20 minutes out, we can still talk for a few minutes. If you like what you've heard and we're done, I'll get off the net. But, uh, hey, Edward, uh, go ahead and jump on here. Edward, I saw, yeah, there you go, Edward. Yeah, now you're okay. good to go.
Well, <clears throat> I want to tell you, it's um, it's a great subject and it's so timely about resetting where you're trying to go and where you intend on going. Um, one of the things that I had to come to grips with being in this in this mastermind is what was I really doing? I mean, I've been doing what I'm what I'm doing now for a long time, but I really didn't understand what it really was, and I didn't understand that it was really in my head. It wasn't what I was doing, and the results were not what. I intended, it's just that it was what was happening. So you go back to the books that we've read and all those books, every one of them have been read supposedly by me. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm like, I really didn't read these. I really didn't read these. What I did is I just kind of scoured them. Uh, you know, think and grow rich. How many times have, have I been through that? But I didn't read it to use the information. I read it to read to to read it and say, you know what? Well, yeah, I've read that. I've read that. You know. But in reality, what did you glean from it? Okay. So that's number one. Are we reading to read, or are we reading to use? That's number one. Number two. Um, are we visualizing to map where we're going or is it just mental ascent? You know, I mean, is it just, are we just going through the motions? Um, are we meditating to build belief or is it meaningful complacency or meaningless complacency, you know? Um, are we inspired to action or is it just wet bath? You know, because that's what that's what a lot of these, these this information is. You know, you can get in the, in the tub and get wet, but guess what? You still dirty. <laughs> you hadn't washed anything off. So uh, we got to be inspired to action. Then, then you know, your thoughts will change your world pretty much immediately if you act on what you know. And then uh, you know, you got to come up with the understand that the same earth. Uh, we all have different worlds on the same earth. So it's up to the thoughts we have, the vibrations that we create. Because an analogy that I've learned is that vibrations are just like Google. <laughs> you know, you can put in what you, what you want and it'll come from everywhere. And you can look at the vibration that you're creating to determine how people react to you. And you can turn it off or turn it on, whatever the case may be. So, you know, this mastermind has just brought me out in so many different ways. And I'm just telling you, I'm just so excited about where we are and what we're trying to do. So thank you so much. Thanks, Edward. Uh, great points um, in, in your last comment, particularly about the, the vibrations. So as I, I mentioned, you know, talking about James Allen, you know, we're tilling our, our garden. That is so true. And the one thing I, well, of many things, but the JLSM environment that has given me and when John has, you know, his opportunities when he's, when he's talking with us, the things that, um, that help me uh, in everyday aspect is I now um, are more sensitized to those um, feelings that, that either drive me into that rabbit hole or move me in the other direction. <clears throat> I I acknowledge that I start to go, and, and it still happens. I'm not saying I don't have those moments, but I my my ability to recognize more quickly that I'm going down that hole has improved. So I can make that turn and go like, whoa, whoa, whoa. no, that's not where I'm going. Get out of that mess. Get your head out of you, you know what, and get focused. So um, it's just positive vibrations, staying connected, staying integrated with this group. Uh, people, that's the whole idea of the mastermind, right? It's taking all the forces, all the vibrations from all these different 
you know, intellectual beings and pulling that information together, pulling those vibrations to help one also move forward in a positive way. So I, I'm, I'm getting that more and more. It's, I'm, I'm no duty expert. Heck, John's been doing this for what, 20, 30 years? You guys have been doing this forever. I have not. And, and while I could say that in some environments, we wanted to stay positive, we want to stay focused, it was in kind of a different way. This last year, uh, over a year now, has been uh, very crucial for me um, on an emotional and mental front too. So um, I'm just very grateful. And I, I, I say my gratitudes every day, twice a day, in the morning and when I go to bed at night. So it's, uh, it's like, it, it's religion now for me, along with other things. Anybody else want to step out here? I want to see any other hands. Are we done? Oh, Gail. Come on out, Gail. Okay. I just, <clears throat> over the last several days with the different sessions, they all seem to um, point and say the same thing, um, to take stock, to reset if necessary. And with the different things that I've had happen to me over this last year with four broken bones and, and a major surgery, it put a hold on a, a lot of things that I was trying to do or wanted to do. And I was getting mad at myself and I stopped doing things. And then after all of these things and now today with you, it's, I, it's made my mind up. I want to reset. I want to now, while I can't do much with this hand, um, I can go back and reevaluate everything and see, do I want to keep on with that or with this or with this? And that's what I'm in the process of doing now. So you just now made me realize that, yes, what I'm trying to do is okay and that it's, it's my path for now. So thank you. Thank you, Gail. Um, yes. And, and as Glenn had, had mentioned, just, uh, it, you know, because we failed at something doesn't mean we're failures. And I don't know that I would even take it that far. Somebody else said earlier this week, maybe it was in the last, it was this week, I'm pretty sure somebody had, had mentioned that too, Gail, about just um, look at it as an opportunity. Don't look at them as failures. Look at that. Maybe it was Nicola that was talking about having to let go of one of her previous businesses. Okay, it was a learning opportunity. Um, we've all gone through that too. Mm -hmm. And just because we let it go doesn't mean that, that we've, we've failed. We took something from that information, from that, those activities, from that effort. So something positive came out of that. And we can use that, use what, till what is good with that. Absolutely. And, and disregard that, well, let me not disregard you, you acknowledge that and you'll learn from it. I would put it that way. Yeah, absolutely. I agree 100%. Thank, Thank you. you, Gail. Yes, you bet. Uh, anybody else like to step in here? Um, if there's nobody else, I would, uh, as I always do, if he's hanging around, um, the master of disaster. I shouldn't say it that way, but uh, hey, um, the magnet. Mr. Lavinia, if you hey, uh, yeah, thank you, Mark. Uh, great yes, talk, sir. and um, and good to see some people I haven't seen in a while. Hey, Sharon, are you lounging? You've got a little coffee house thing going over there. Yeah, you look great. Um, just just want to say that uh, that the the um, affinity goes goes both ways. Um, I like when you talked about opportunity, and and look there. Are, there are as many paths as there are people that take them. You know, I um, I know I get to work. I have the privilege of working uh, closely with a, a few people here who are on this call right now, and um, and different skills, different interests and aptitudes. Um, I don't think we all want a mirror, right? Is that is that what we signed up for? We all should be clones or something? No, no, of course not, right? And so I thought it was also interesting what what Edward was talking about you know, with a, a bit of a, a shift in perspective, probably a major shift in perspective. But but really, there's one thing that that I've noticed that because um, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs inside and outside of this group, but um, anything can work. So think of it like this, right? So there's people that that get rich in whatever, right? I mean, anything could work, right? Now, some things are, you know, not all opportunities are created equal. Some things are better than others, at least in my opinion. Um, 
you know, some things are more legitimate than others, right? Some things have more staying power. So pick your path, right? And with that, we pick our problems, right? So I have problems that I wouldn't have doing this other thing, right? But guess what problems I don't have, right? So I guess that's the, the other way to look at it, right? Is, is like, pick your problems. Think about this. Let's say that everyone here uh, exceeds every goal you've ever set, right? And you're making more money in a month than you're accustomed to making in a year. You know what your tax bill is going to look like? That's a new problem, right? It's a good problem. Actually, it's not a good problem, but it's kind of an inescapable problem. There's there's other things we could do to massage that and you know practice uh, tax avoidance, which is different than tax evasion, which is illegal. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Anyway, that's what's coming up for me, Mark. And uh, and I like to know that I'm on the right path for me. And sometimes I do know that. And sometimes I wonder, you know. So, but I really appreciate this group. Thank you all for your insights. I'll pass it back to you. Thank you, John. Appreciate you coming out. A um, couple things, just as um, since it looks like we're kind of winding down here, I wanted to wish Sandy a happy birthday. So happy birthday, Sandy. Yes. Thank you, Mark. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> you're quite welcome. Uh, you're 29 today, right? I think that's uh, uh, what we talked yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's how right. I feel. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Say hi to the kids for me, please. I will. So, um, and also for the rest of the day, um, we have uh, we have our hospitality suite immediately following this. And the secret weapon, John's secret weapon, comes up at 5 p.m. Pacific, uh, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Uh, Shannon uh, is at uh, 5 p.m. Uh, so with her, her branding uh, session. So please join uh, if you are able to do so. And with that, unless somebody has a burning desire, I am going to stop the recording and call it a day for everybody and wish you all a wonderful, happy, productive, and positive day. Thank you very much. You guys, take Thank care. Yeah, let's do the Glenn. Yeah, that's right. We'll do the whole thing. So, you guys, take care. So, let me stop my.